Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, very nice to be here and straight after lunch. We sort of got a bit of a smorgasbord of ideas. We're going to be combining um, open uh, sort of um, sort of mind planning, drones, AI, um, and a whole lot of data. So, so sort of sit back, strap in, um, and sort of uh, sort of enjoy the ride, I guess. So, so Craig, are you there with me? Yeah, Chris. Hey. Yeah. How are you going, all? And and thank you, Rebecca, for your introduction. That's great. So I'll um, I'll be driving here with uh, with Craig today, um, and I'll let um, sort of Craig have the, the sort of the get go and uh, tell you how we all sort of put this all together. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Now I'm based in Melbourne today, so um, I had to I have to be remote. Um, it's all good. And what I'm going to talk about is the convergence of um, technology by partnering. Um, technology by itself is great, but when it converges, real value um, comes about. So what I'm going to talk about today in particular is just today's mind planning challenges and, our, and mine and, and our experience in that and how we um, solve that um, particular challenge, which is stability. Um, through my career, I've seen um, many mines um, have good visibility of the operation, um, but stability is something that we try to achieve. And um, what I'm going to show you today is how to achieve that with these companies. So this is what we're all familiar about with, um, with a mining operation. Don't be too concerned that it's underground down the bottom. This, this applies to all types of operations is that we usually um, gather the the mapping and the plots. Um, if you've got Centric, you're doing that production accounting at level three. We are seeing some iPad and electronic um, type of devices come into this area. We're very familiar with FMS and what we do with standard operating procedures and scheduling. Um, asset management sits by itself, um, usually. Um, superintendent's interested, but we're bringing that into the fold as well. So what you need to understand here is that they're all file-based systems and um, everyone's working in isolations and coming together in a reporting cycle or in a meeting. And there's some paper-based systems that we have no visibility to. The issue is they're disparate and um, the information, you can't see it through a single um, point or a single source of truth. So this is our typical um, as-is state um, technology jargon there. Uh, the what, um, what we do. Um, this, this cycle can be any cycle, by the way. This can be applied um, to production. Um, this can be applied to forecasting. Um, this can be applied to budgeting and also um, strategic mind planning that we're here today. Is that we go into a reporting cycle, um, we forecast, from there, um, we socialize our plans in a way in reports, PDFs and whatever, and we look for stake, stakeholder buy-in. And what we do in the mine plan is we typically um, bring all this information together um, for the stakeholders and that provides um, management, corporate, shareholders a guidance on what we're going to achieve. But as we know, mining is a highly variable environment, um, hostile at times in terms of the um, you know, where we work in terms of um, you know, blasting and um, underground. And the equipment and um, operator performance deviates in this environment. Um, we cannot predict the grade all the time, or this is just an estimate anyway. So the mill head grade um, deviates. We can have unforeseen um, disruptions like geotechnical issues and weather and what this does is that prior to deviation that we employ countermeasures um, during during the month. And there is real no single source of truth apart from these meetings. And it's difficult to measure from someone who's sitting outside the mine the cause and effect of these decisions. Often we try to update um, whoever needs to be updated as best we can. Um, there's lack of cohesion between um, decision makers, the geos, the engineers, the surveyors, the metallurgists all all sit in their own departments but do come together. There's limited traceability of the decisions being made, there's poor visibility and we can continuously miss target, we won't get that but there's a probability that we will hit target. So what we 
are accustomed to is that top right hand corner, which is visibility. Um, the truck movements are counted for this particular example, 100 ton. We work out the opening bounce, and this is a very simplistic view. Um, we times it out and work out the declared amount of tons. And, that, and again, this can be for a heading. And what we find is that when we survey it, um, there is a difference. There always will be. But what I'm presenting here today is a way of getting stability with um, Chris's technology combined with Centric and be able to do a survey at a press of a button within a much shorter period. And that will provide you stability and write back them adjustments to the truck. And being able to do that inside a day, inside like a shift, enables you as an operator to work out why the trucks are deviating. Um, are we looking at some sort of um, material like mud? Are we looking at a, um, a complex um, dig location or has the, has the material been misplaced somewhere? So what I'm going to present now is um, Chris's technology. Again, this is a convergence of technology. And when Chris and I met some time ago um, with Centric in mind and our expertise at Entech, um, Chris really um, met, met our needs in this particular technology. Chris, go ahead. Thanks. Thanks so much, Craig. So when, um, so, uh, so what sort of Craig was alluding to when we first met up, um, We've, we've been in the drone game for about over 12 years, really taking you know young drone pilots, putting them on mine sites, and primarily to do a lot around survey and, and volumetrics. But drones have progressed quite a lot since then in terms of the development of their sensors, as well as the, the, the software and the processing behind it. Um, and really, we started to see the opportunity and how we can combine not only the, the the power of the AI technology that we that we've seen coming to market, but as well as the automation behind the drones and the automation of that data capture, and how all these separate ingredients sort of put together can provide these decisions in near real time. So, so actually, ch sort of chatting with Craig was a passion of mine to to try and figure out how we could use automated drone technology to essentially build a carbon bot and uh, and start uh, identifying um, sort of real-time impacts and accountability and transactional accounting of that carbon um, on, a, on a daily basis. Um, and this is where we're starting out, is really using Centric from a, a sort of an accounting point of view to, to really sort of mirror what is happening in the geophysical world and then putting that into a, a, a quantification. So I've got a short little video here of, um, of a product that we just built and deployed out to a, a gold mining customer in the last two months. Um, we're the first in the country to uh, get CASA approval for this unit. So it's it's a it's a unit that exists and works today and uh, and it's currently flying between about three to four hours every day, fully automated, uh, run from our remote operations center here in Perth. The Australian outback is full of minerals, but one of the harshest environments around. Rocket DNA wants to provide a solution that helps people get to these areas safely and more effectively. Rocket DNA are the experts in being able to reliably and safely capture high quality aerial data. We're able to customize a fully integrated solution designed to automate those dull and dangerous tasks within these very remote and harsh environments. What we're experiencing today with the new XBOT is a revolution in data capture and autonomy. And combine that with the opportunity of AI is this incredible power of not only capturing the data autonomously, but producing insights and results in near real time. There's a lot involved in being able to capture high quality aerial data day after day. It requires the right hardware and software configured the right way regulatory approvals, particularly for beyond visual line of sight and autonomous drone operations. And it requires an understanding of the customer's problems and the types of outputs that may benefit the customer. What makes the Rocket DNA solution so unique is that it's all been pre-configured and built in our workshops, ready to deploy at a moment's notice. We don't require any concrete pads or special infrastructure. We can connect to existing power and data or we can operate entirely independently with solar power and Starlink connection. 
All of our inspect bots are supported by our global network of remote operating centers. These are based across Australia and Africa and incorporate the ability for us to not only monitor the airspace and make sure that we're mitigating against any kind of air traffic and air risks, but as well as allowing us to deploy at any time of day or night. From the remote operations center, the pilot can be essentially monitoring the drone as he would on site. We also have a team of highly dedicated and very well-trained personnel that ensure that the maintenance and the SLAs on each of these Xbots is happening on a continuous basis. You don't know what you don't measure. The idea about doing daily flights is that you're able to implement short-term controls and stop the problems before the fires get any bigger. We're really all about safety and bringing that overall situational awareness to the mine sites and to every role player within each department. We're pleased to partner with Rocket DNA. Um, they've been here since uh, the site first kicked off, assisting us with uh, full-time drone flights and the ability to bring this new piece of technology to site is really exciting for our team, as well as uh, sustaining our, our overall productivity. There's a lot of applications that can certainly add a lot of value, but I'm really keen on that whole emergency response and having data very quickly, um, footage of what exactly what's going on so the team can determine what they need and respond appropriately. Inspections that we conduct for our customers include pipeline inspections, at height inspections of mobile and fixed plant, thermal inspections of solar farms, daily site videos, and even the detection of wildlife and people with thermal imagery for environmental and security application. Rocket DNA is CASA and CA approved for both remote operations as well as beyond visual line of sight. So we've got, a, we've got a team of people from a range of backgrounds, including mining surveyors and engineers, aviation professionals, other geospatial professionals. We include all the equipment, the regulatory approvals, as well as the ongoing maintenance to get you flying today. Contact us today to see how Rocket DNA can help you to make better decisions faster. So that's a little bit about uh, what we've been up to, and it's um, it's been quite an interesting sort of journey. That um, you know, as soon as we put out our first sort of export unit, which is it's based on a DJI Dock One, which we fully integrated into a MindSpec um, SCID, Starlink weather station camera system to really allow the system to operate fully autonomously on its own in these uh, in these remote areas. And uh, what really started for in doing basic inspections and uh, and monitoring um, um, sort of conveyor lines and and plant and equipment, very quickly transformed into to measuring doing stockpiles and uh, sort of as Evan mentioned, we even look flying at night to do uh, looking for dingoes which are coming into these mining camps generally attracted from by um, um, from sort of the the rubbish dumps and uh, and actually then attacking people in the camps. So we're actually even flying and you're detecting. Sort of the animals using the thermal so it's been really quite interesting in terms of its applications and um yeah and and really looking at sort of the the back end of it um how this is all operated quite nice and safely you know all the way like between um using the styling connectivity um you can have the nice remote operators sort of fly during the morning be on the beach by the afternoon um and it kind of sort of looks into gives them sort of an aspect of where a lot of the mining applications will go to, um, in the future. If you think about a lot about what your roles and your jobs are and doing is you're making a lot of decision based on data. So some, some of those you have to go to the site, kick the tires and find out what's happening. But imagine if you're getting access to that data in near real time, um, just by requesting a, a quick flight, the capacity is already installed on the site. You can get a model of the pit um, and really ingest that into any kind of piece of software that uh, either can be pre-configured or, or sort of flown on demand, and you bring those models in and you never need to go out to site again. Um, it allows you really to get a quick turnaround of, of that project work um, and, and, those, and those data sets. And, and this is really the, the sort of the experiment that we're going along with, uh, with Intech as well in delivering the solution to the customer. And how that all works is we're, we're starting off by placing these on, on the mine sites. We're, doing mission planning, which really involves setting up about 20 or 30 pre-configured waypoint missions. These can be a range of anything, um, any kind of uh, different kind of missions or inspections. Um, you've, you've got different kinds of sensors from, from very high resolution, 48 megapixel zoom lenses, all the way to wide angle, 12 megapixel cameras, as well as the thermal. So you can, you can really pick and choose what kind of data sets you want to generate out of this. 
Um, what's quite interesting is majority of it is is really pre-configured. So you know what kind of ROM pads and, and volumetrics you want to get on a daily basis to anything that you need to do um, ad hoc or activate in an emergency uh, to send the drone to to give live stream video from from anywhere on on the mine site. That's all those um, all those flight paths are then ingested into the system. We do final authorizations and flight checks, making sure the airspace is clear or, or that uh, any any operators who are currently flying in the area that are communicated with um, before we launch the, the actual unit. And then we're really sort of monitoring that, feeding back the live video stream if required back to the customers in a, in a YouTube style live streaming uh, front end. Um, the drone then comes back, it lands, immediately starts charging. It's got uh, so the electrical um, sort of connectors at the, the base. There's no swapping of the batteries. It takes about half an hour to, to charge that unit. And while it's charging, it's immediately downloading the photos and the videos and, um, and uploading that into the cloud. The, this is a... Um, uh, this can then be pushed directly to um, any kind of third-party software or even just the imagery can be pushed to your own Amazon S3 bucket or your own um, on-site um, uh, endpoints, um, or we can push it into our own photogrammic engine to uh, to build the models. This is what it um, what would look like from, from one end. So, so customers who are looking to get a near real-time view of, uh, of getting their, um, their stockpiles and volumetrics, we push this through the engine, and uh, unable to to really get this within the same day, so the AI sort of detects the uh, the toes and um, uh, the, the edges of each of the stockpiles, and then uh, sort of auto generates that, and then can feed that back through um, into a BI dashboard or into the Centric software um, automatically. So you got the volumes um, available same day. Why why go through the effort of automating this? Why why not continue with the current sort of drone sort of drone programs and uh, and sort of the surveying? Um, what are some of the big key reasons what we're seeing uh, within the customers is is really the um, the limitations and the constraints around getting the right skills onto site as well as getting them to um, you know sort of focus on these really dull and boring sort of tasks. Um, some of the missions which we've which we've conducted is around pipe, pipeline monitoring, looking for for leaks on the so the saline um, sort of solutions. And you know, the really the idea is about um, better effectively deploying people to uh, to not putting them out in forty degree heat, but rather sending the drone to do that on an autonomous basis. Um, the drone also provides this uh, ability to provide the situational awareness, especially around shift change. Um, and we've just seen that it really gives that element of knowing what happened the day before to um, to the, sort of those new people that come on to uh, for, for that shift. Um, it's also really around the compliance side. It's uh, sort of Craig spoke about it a lot earlier. Is it's that consistency in that reporting uh, that's that's uh, now all fully automated. You are getting on the same day on the same point, the data point every single day. Um, and that really then gives you the confidence to make the decisions that you that need to happen on on that day. Um, it's all very nicely visual based, so you're getting the the feedback. You can validate it quite easily, um, and uh, and it allows you to to sort of feed those into any other kinds of systems or policies um, that you need to uh, you need to make a call on. Um, and that really sort of ends off on on our side, where we sort of fit in the pipeline of this automated data capture. And uh, and now they're now feeding into the centric uh, into the centric system, Craig. Thanks, Chris. So what so what Chris has uh, um, explained before adds a lot of value to the centric platform. Um, it leaves electronic systems behind, what we said said about before, and adds a single source of truth um, through the operations and makes the data available when it's actually gathered. So you going back to that write back process where we did that visibility, the stability, you're able to um, make the corrections on the truck in real time. So what happens is that the um, rocket DNA um, survey bot goes up, uh, it collects the information, it sends the information to Centrix, it gets ingested. So imagine that you're getting volume volumetrics reported by the throughout the day and imagine that you're actually seeing what payloads have actually been um, trucked to what locations it gives you a total ownership of making decisions on the bench as this um, system is available on um, mobile devices 
So by doing this, we're able to track what we said that we were going to do, um, what we promised in our plan, in that huddle before, and our budgets and forecasts, and it facilitates incentives to meet the plan because you're in control now. Um, it trenches um, decision making. It trenches decision making on the bench and with the with the operator itself. It trenches decision making with the actual engineers, geologists, and surveyors, and it trenches decision making with the management themselves and understanding what's being produced. You're able to collate the um, the fuel receipts against the actual movement, so it gives you that real um, visibility to um, carbon emissions as you're progressing through the month, and that can be one of the incentives that you may decide to employ in the future. So with this type of analytics, we're able to distribute information in the ways that we're used to on mobile devices and make sure that everyone's fully informed and include third party tools. We still can go back to our beloved Excel and do whatever um, um, reporting that we need. The strategic mind plan is um, able to get visibility to the system so they can understand through the historian how that particular location's performed and get a better understanding um, of um, the probabilistic um, measures that we can produce today through scotastic scheduling and such. So what we formed is a new architecture with our partners, and this is the convergence that we're talking about. Um, Rocket DNA, um, mostly um, at level two. Um, Entech themselves have partnered with other um, suppliers like mining electrical ind industries at Wangara, and we're producing, we're actually fabricating devices that enable us to track machines and emissions underground and um, optimize um, ventilation in that in that way. Um, of course, Chris can provide drones underground as well. So that's been complemented here. The production accounting is filled by Centric with the right back processes and that's making the information available to all. And the FMS system we tend to leave alone but still stands by itself. And where Entech produces its skills and the scheduling workflow with its partners, analytics with Centric and its partners and mine planning. It's important to note the mine planning function still stays the same. Every, every function on site still stays the same. We're complementing with this architecture. Asset management is one we're looking at right now. And we figure out that we figure we're looking at a new partner there. So not only will we be able to work out um, the material movement, you'll be able to work out the health of the equipment as well. And that's coming about probably in the next one, two, or probably Q1 next year, we'll have asset health as well. What are we doing here? Um, we're, we're, you're, you own your models, you own your mine plans, you own the mineral resource model, you own your tactics and your strategic mine plans and your financial model. That all stays the same. Where this technology came about is from strategic mine planning. Entech, um, we through 2050, need to um, predict what a mine in the future will look like. So what we've been doing is we've been doing discrete event simulation, um, the actual truck movements themselves, like gaming, and we are modelling conveyor systems next to trucking systems, next to um, blasting processes in a discrete event simulation engine, and that's technology that we've invested in and we've got working and we're producing studies in that today because the actual mining systems become a lot more complex. But when I came across Chris and we looked at rocket DNA, we looked at it and I thought, yeah, we can do the same on a day-to-day -day operation. So we can simulate a day and we've proven that. We can look at the production targets, the emission targets for a site for a particular um, period, and we can simulate that that period, and we can give you a probabilistic measure that you how you're going to achieve that. So how does it work? Um, we have a new capability at Entech with our remote operations management, um, typically. Um, yeah, supporting sites, boots on the ground is great. Um, a lot of other consultants do that, but Entech prefer to do studies and due diligence. But what we what we actually um, moving more towards because we think it complements our studies business is remote operations management, where we work with 
a platform centric and that produces um, data based decisions and we're able to partner with the mining companies that we know um, and tech has a huge network and we're planning and simulating that particular horizon this can be any planning horizon and what NTEP provides us experts uh, advice around that planning horizon to make sure that we don't destroy value or and also provide a probabilistic measure of meeting that particular plan. So again, you own your plan. All we're doing is adding on capability through this um, new technology. So how do we do it? Um, in, in the context of rocket DNA um, centric on a daily operation is that we with our remote operations offering is that review we review the daily results um, on on cloud we simulate we simulate them then results and provide a likelihood of meeting that plan based on the weather and everything that's formed before this particular um, shift and we we there is some ai in there we dashboard our results in a way where they can be consumed and you still have that morning huddle but the difference between that this in the past is that we are providing a, a screen where you can actually see what you're doing throughout the shift. Um, we collect an in-shift activities. Um, Centric provides that capability with iPad devices and, and whatever you deploy with Centric. So decisions are made on devices and you get decisions. So when we simulate, we understand the decisions being made and we ingest that information as well into our technology. We make uh, the client makes the shift adjustments and for and for their own approval process, and then we do the event simulation likelihood, and then we normalise everything again at the end of the day and provide that result. So Chris is providing the the eyes, the visibility. We're we're providing the stability. We're providing the probability of meeting that plan. So where's the business value? It's it's obvious it's a shorter reporting cycle and increased responsiveness. There's nothing better than an operator understanding um, how they're going to perform in that day and actually to be able to make decisions. And what that provides is a basis of continuous improvement. Continuous improvement is very difficult to do, do without stability. You want to see that cause and effect. You want to understand if we do this training program on site, how would that impact our results? If we make changes to that whole network, how does that impact the site? So you can make them changes and you will see the decisions being made and you will see the material impact. You can dashboard disparate systems and extend beyond production like um, decarbonisation and emissions. Um, we've proven that. You can stabilize the systems for improvement. Again, that's continuous improvement. You can identify your bottlenecks like hall roads, um, locations, and whatever bottleneck you may have in regards to um, the crusher, whatever you understand bottleneck theory, the theory of constraints, we can apply that. Um, we can do a, a built-in a built probabilistic reliability that determine the quality of the mine plan. At this time, it's all provided as a service, as you can imagine, um, the amount of skills and technology brought to brought to the table. It's better to provide it as a service and um, provide them OT skills to site. Um, and it's scalable. And this is the beauty of it. When, when you talk about innovation, you always want to meet your KPI on site. You always want to do something every year. So what you're able to do is you're able to start with an Xbox. You're able to tick off that innovation um, KPI for this year, and then you can you, you got the knowledge, knowledge and security, and the and the confidence that you can extend into production accounting because it's been done. That's all owned by the client and provided as a service. The centric system is owned by the client, but can be applied to a service. And then we can, last but least, you can apply the simulation because we are contextualizing the information in a way we're able to provide AI discrete event simulation. Before we were not able to do it because modern computer science didn't allow us to do it. And it's all on cloud-based AI. And it's important to note that you are making decisions. These are your plans. We're not, we're not, we're not replacing anything. We're complementing. We're bringing, we're bringing together stability. So. Um, AI is a good thing um, when making decisions because you're able to make the decision and run the AI.
So this is um, who you turn to. Um, I know there's representatives in Australia for Centric as well. Uh, Andrew will point them out. Uh, I know they're in the room. Um, Antonia, um, in op Ops Manager in um, Canada, Toronto, has ha been helping us through this um, way of thinking, and, and we've been on this for quite some time, and we have real we have real examples. Um, if you rock it, um, that's your starting point. Talk to Chris, he's in the room. And please um, don't welcome to talk to NTEC anytime with any studies, any due diligence or any remote operations management. I know it was, um, I mean, it seemed like quite a smarty box of ideas all in, into one, but um, I guess it was actually by design to have such a um, sort of a modular sort of approach to 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 this. Um, allowing us to sort of focus on each of us and our sort of silos and what we do best, but then sort of cohesively, you know, pulling something together um, using a bit of tech to um, to to solve the problem.